again. There is no place where spirit is not. So spirit is in this place, whether you're with your, us from your home, whether you're here in person. We are spiritual beings. We can't escape, even if we wanted to, being in spirit. So I'll say, as I usually do, good morning, Unity of Payson. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Nice to see everyone in person and so glad you joined us online. Would you take just a moment to be quiet with me as we open in prayer? God of all goodness, we are grateful that we don't have to depend on what we see with our physical eyes and label that as real because there's so much more than that. It's so much bigger. The view offers us so much more. We are grateful that we don't have to reach to the skies to find it, but only to go within. So this morning as we gather, let us look within, let us look for the truth that is always there for us. I'm grateful for each one who has joined us this morning and grateful for this beautiful day, and so it is, amen. We'll move now to our opening song, which is something wonderful. And uh, I'm sure Betty's gonna come up here and shake something. Uh, <laughs> maybe herself, I don't know. <laughs> there we go, something wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Happening to me, it would be right 
like a little reggae beat in the morning. <laughs> good morning, Unity of Payson. It's good to see everybody and everybody online. Uh, and, and speaking of that online, if you can go to the chat and let us know where you're joining us from this morning. We welcome everybody. And um, if you haven't already signed up for the Monday e-newsletter, please do so, so you can be apprised of everything going on. So let's see. Unity of Mesa. We have a visitor, Betty. Uh, well, I saw that from Unity of Mesa. No. No. Oh. We have Joe visiting from Phoenix. All right, Joe. Well, all right, Joe. Welcome. Welcome. J O. Yes, I see. J O iPhone. <laughs> And Skip and Mike. Oh, Skip and Michael. Well, we miss seeing you in person. It's good to see everybody. Hi, Ed. Hi, Kay. Well, hi, everybody this morning. And so, whether you're new or, um, or for those who still have not found us, let's do our blessing this morning together. We love you. We bless you and we welcome you. And like Neil already said, boy, aren't we grateful for this gorgeous weather at my house. I think it was 81 yesterday. Felt like getting on the bathing suit, you know, catching a few rays. Anyway, so we're grateful for everybody here, for all, all the gifts of when you volunteer, time, talents, treasures. So we're grateful for all of that. Uh, Ram, do you have the microphone this morning to pass around? Um, so if you have a gratitude, the microphone is coming around here in person. If you have a gratitude online, you can put that in the chat also. And Sue has my brought her grandson. Yeah, I brought my grandson today. He's visiting for a whole week, so there's for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> that was a high from Desmond. <laughs> I just have so is it on? Yeah. I have so Real much close. to be grateful for. Uh, last uh, Sunday, Mother's Day, I had the wonderful privilege to have my children all together. Two of my daughters live in Dewey, and the other two live here in Payson. And it's just wonderful when we all get together on Mother's Day. I agree with that one, June. I'm so grateful that I live close enough to my kids that I can see them on a regular basis. And um, my hearts go out to anybody who has family on the other side of the world, as opposed to close. So unity is grounded in affirmative prayer and in meditation. And uh, we have trained prayer chaplains to sit with you in prayer. Um, if you have a need, uh, both Sue and I are here this morning. Um, and Donna is online. We do have the prayer box in the back there. Um, if you'd like to write out a prayer request and place it in the box. And during the week, if you have um, a prayer need, you can go to um, the address on the screen, neil.unityofpayson at gmail.com. We hold them sacred and confidential. We just had a great prayer uh, meeting yesterday for the chaplains. And um, we started out with only a couple requests. And by the end of the meeting, we had, I don't know, seven or eight of them. So, um, don't hesitate. We hold them for 30 days in prayer, and then they're sent on to Silent Unity, and they're held for another 30 days there. So our theme for the month is community. 
and our affirmation. Let's say this one together. Reflecting our oneness, we live and contribute to community. I know when they um, talk about all the blue zones around the world, um, besides being active and eating healthy food, the one thing that really contributes to longevity is having close relationships in community and making a difference in that community and feeling honored by the community. Uh, so it is important to have that community connection. And our speaker today, our own Reverend Neil, is reaching in in order to reach out. And metaphysical moment. I am going to read the daily word today. You know, I usually like to read a skew from whatever's norm, <laughs> but today I liked this one. And it says, I am. I am a living expression of God. In the book of Exodus, Moses asks God his name. God responds, I am who I am. I am is the name of the divine presence within me also, a reminder of my spiritual nature. Sometimes I may forget my divine identity by thinking of myself as weak, incapable, or unfortunate. If I have spoken disempowering words about myself, not that any of us would do negative talk to ourselves, I release those thoughts and stop using those words. Each time I say, I am, I strengthen my awareness of the truth of my being. I am God's life. I am love, wisdom, and strength expressing uniquely as me. As I pay attention to my thoughts and words, I am able to recognize and release limiting thoughts more quickly. My awareness of my true identity grows stronger and stronger. I am a living expression of God. And I think we sometimes need to be reminded of that and to be willing to step into our bigness, what we can do. It is how we're going to shift the world. It is how we're going to shift our larger community here, is by stepping into that we have power. We are power. And now Reverend Neil with our message. That daily word was just perfect, and you'll see why. I'd like to begin with a story today. We got just a little piece of that story in the daily word. The story is a Bible story found in the Hebrew scriptures. And the key character is Moses. So you see how we're matching up already. So a little backstory for the part we're going to focus on, Moses was born at a time when all of the Hebrew children were being killed. But he escaped that, he got hidden, and eventually grew up in the palace of the Pharaoh. And at one point when he was an adult, he was out away from the palace and noticed his people serving or slaving in some work project. And he couldn't handle it. He lost it. And in fact, he killed a slave master, or what we might call a prison guard, and of course had to flee. Where he fled to? Well, it's called the west side of the wilderness in the Bible story. It sounds like the end of nowhere. And in that west side of the wilderness, he was tending his father-in-law's flock. So he went from the palace to a lowly shepherd. Oh, here's quiz time. 
while he was there in the west of the wilderness, a spectacular thing happened. He came upon something that was just something he'd never seen before, and it was a, oh, see, everybody knows that. It's a burning bush. The, burning, the bush burned. It didn't get consumed. It kept on burning. And eventually Moses heard a voice coming from that bush, calling him Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. Note that, here am I. We talked about I am before, but here, here in all of the translations, it's here am I. And uh, Moses then listened as the bush, God, to him, spoke to him and said, I have a job for you. I'd like you to go back to Egypt and uh, tell the Pharaoh in whose palace you grew up to let my people go. All that workforce that's out there doing all those projects, let them go. Well, I'm sure he was shaking in his boots. And he said this, who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Again, who am I? He went on to say, well, if I do this, who am I going to say sent me? And the answer, I am. Not am I, but I am. Notice how it, when Moses is talking, it's am I. And suddenly, the voice of the divine is I am. I am that I am. Tell them that I am sent me. That I am has a very present moment sense to it. And uh, the voice continued to say, I'll be with you all along. I'll be right alongside of you. I'm there with you always. Go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. We'll leave the story there. But I like to think that something transformed in Moses at that point. I'm sure it did as the story goes. He went from looking at the world where he was a murderer, pretty awful, to looking to the present moment and the presence of the divine with him on a mission. That's quite a transformation. And of course he did that. And as you know, the story goes on that he led the Hebrews out of Egypt. But he had to go to that present moment. He had to reach in to that I am that was with him. And he might not have known it, but that I am that was very much a part of him. So our theme is community for this month. And I like to say this, where do we start? When we're going to reach out to community for whatever reason, where do we start? Do we start in the outer world? Let's make a plan. Or do we start in the inner world? And that's what I'd like to talk about today. I put together a key spiritual truth. When we address life from the inner world first, our outer world is transformed. As within, so without. Let's talk about the outer world first. The outer world is a world of reactivity. It's a world of decision-making according to the brain. It's a world of maybe sometimes thinking it over, but if it's like, if you're like me, it's more often knee-jerk. We just do it. We gotta get on the move and get it done. And so we do. It's a world of ego, a world dominated by I, not I am, by I, by me, a world that is looking at the past more than anything else, not the present. It asks the questions like, uh, 
How much do I know? How am I viewed? How can I get attention? What are my thoughts? It's a world where ego is either more than or less than. It's a world that bypasses the divine. What result do we get if we go first to that outer world? Some of you know that we've had a fear class. Some of you have been part of that. A fear class on uh, Thursdays for the last six weeks. And so we've delved into fear a little bit. One of the acronyms for fear, which you probably know, is false evidence appearing real. Fear is a crippling thing. And it's in the past or it's in the future. Either we're traumatized by the past or we're worrying about the future. And the two are often linked, but we don't stay in the present moment. In the present moment, all we do is move on. We react. I was thinking about when I was fearful and I think of a time when um, I was most fearful and I was visiting in, no, actually vacationing in Mexico on the West Coast at a beautiful little beach, staying in a timeshare condo. It's a great place. But I'm curious, Neil, as my, one of my emails talked about, and so I walked up that beach and eventually got to the point where the beach ran out and the rocks began. And I wanted to know what was on beyond the rocks. And so I climbed through those rocks and went on up the coastline a little further and finally got to the point where I realized that the day was waning and I better get back. Well, I looked at my situation, rocks around me, a path that I had come. And uh, I looked up and there was a fairly steep incline going up away from the sea and without a, another thought, I said, oh, I'm just going up that incline and then I'll easily walk back. Guess what? It didn't work out quite like that. I scrambled up the incline, got up there and found that as I began to walk back, there were crevices that I had to get over. Um, there was a undergrowth all around me. It was scratching me. But eventually I got through that and I got to a banana plantation. By now I was thoroughly confused. No longer could I see the sea and I was afraid. I actually was fearful for my life. Now that may have related to something that happened earlier in my life, I'm not sure, but I was truly afraid. I was afraid that I wouldn't get back worrying about getting home and I was afraid that this would be my end. Well, as you know, I did get back. And, uh, but that fear was a paralyzing fear that happened because I never paused for a moment to at least reflect, find out where I am, let alone seek spiritual guidance in that situation when I was in the rocks down in the sea. Probably would have been easy. I mean, climbed over the rocks to get there. Probably would have been easy enough to go back along that trail. But it appeared before me a cliff, and I was up it. I was working in the outer world. I didn't even have a sniff of what might happen in the in the in the uh, inner world. Fear will keep us in that outer world. Another thing that uh, if we start up in the, in the outer world that we're likely to find is a lot of limitation. We speak from time to time about nothing is impossible. With the divine, nothing is impossible. But when we're in that outer world framework, there's limitation. Catherine Hepburn said it very well. 
life is hard, and then you die. As you've heard that sentiment before. Is life hard, or is there not other possibility? Well, in the outer world, it mostly stays life is hard. And we recycle that thought again and again and again. Interesting quote that comes from, I don't read this often, but the Book of Mormon talks about the limitation. It talks about waking up from that outer world framework. It says this, you that would awake, awake from a deep sleep, shake off the chains by which you are bound which are the chains which bind the children of men. Did you get that? The children of men, not the children of God. We talk about ourselves as being the expressions of the divine, children of the divine. When we're looking at it as children of men from that totally human perspective, that perspective that says, I got a brain, I'm figuring it out, and I'm forging ahead. Well, then we've started in the outer world, and it doesn't end well or go well from there, at least in my experience. The key spiritual tooth might be reset and said when we address life from the outer world first, our world is unlikely to be transformed. We'll probably just live it over and over again. But let's turn to the inner world. The inner world is that meld of humanity and divinity. We speak about fully being human, fully being divine. It is the I am that Moses first became acquainted with. It's a place of being rather than a place of doing. I am metaphysically interpreted is this, the divine name in humans. The divine name in humans, I am. The indwelling Christ, the spiritual woman, the spiritual man. That is the I am, and that's part and parcel of the inner world. We talk about being spiritual beings, beings having a human experience all the time. Those beings, those spiritual beings live in the present. When we live that out, we live in the present. With an ear tuned to the divine with a willingness to do inner work. Remember, this is the inward approach. This is from our inward world. world. That inner work may, do think, may address things like healing. We pray with people for healing, and we do so affirmatively. But it's not an outer expression. It is a holding of the truth that's part of the inner world. And forgiveness, that's an inner work, often chains us to the same pattern that we go over and over and over and around with, and we are not free. So, the antidote for this is hearing the voice of the divine. But how do we hear the voice of the divine? Is it like Moses coming out of a, well, not a burning bush, but maybe something else, maybe a tree in the forest? Or some, they hear an audible voice, but I guess not most. Some have a spirit guide, and that guide very clearly gives them a sense of guidance, direction, support, inspiration. And some of us might spend a time in meditation, and from that we, ah, aha, 
something came to me that I didn't know. This all is part of that inner world, but it could be as simple as a nudge. A nudge. You just feel a nudge. It didn't come from manufactured thought. It just is a nudge. And that, in fact, is intuitive. And that's what we do. We access our intuition. Sometimes we use tools to help us. I don't know if you can see this. This is a tool I use all the time. It's a pendant. I don't know if anybody's familiar with dowsing, but dowsing is something that helps you connect with your intuitive self. So there's a way to do that. You have to experiment to find what it is. Some of you were, grew up having closer, closer access to your intuition. I didn't, I need help. And so I've used this. And, but I find that as I connect, it's easier and easier and easier to connect with that inner self, that inner self with a capital S, the more I go along. Key spiritual truth again. When we address life from the inner world first, our outer world is transformed. As within, so without. So inner before outer. Let's talk about that a little bit. If we start in our outer world, we're likely to encounter confusion, lack of purpose, we're likely to surrender to the ego, that I part of us, that I that must be gratified by acknowledgement, that I that must be gratified by being important, that I that must be gratitude by having a sense of I control my destiny and probably yours too. In that outer world, we're likely to see pattern thinking. We think consciously a bit. We think subconsciously a lot. So what we may have learned at four or five years old, we got a five, a five or six here, five, a five year old here today. What he's learning now is going to stay with him in his life until there's a transformational process that goes on. And sometimes that pattern thinking doesn't serve us very well. We just go round and round and round with it. That subconscious thinking. Fear cycles are there. Fear of past, fear of present. My wife, gave, Donna, gave me a book a couple of years ago as I was just starting to play golf. Name of the book is Zen Golf. And Joseph Parent is the author. And it's, it, it's, a, it's about golf, but it's about life. Um, and here's one of the phrases that he says is one of his very famous, favorite, I mean. Um, you produce what you fear. So out on the golf course, for example, on the eighth hole of Payson Golf Course, there's a nice little lake right in front of the tee and of course the green is on the other side i don't know how many golf balls there are on the bottom of that little lake but there's a whole lot i know that i put a few of them there and when you are there fearing hitting the water not the land you're more likely to do it you produce what you fear and the same is true in life, if we live with that fear and recycle it again and again, we're likely to experience it again and again. This outer world is a world of do first. Do so that you can have second. And if there's anything left over, it's be. First do, then have, then be. But let's go to the inner world. In the inner world, they're all present things like insight. 
I like that word, insight, that comes from within. Intelligence. There's a divine intelligence and knowing within us. That's part of the inner world. Intuition, which we've spoken of already. And inspiration. Have you ever spent the time in quiet and you come away just inspired? That's part of the inner world. We live from the inside out. We live with, on the inside, mind. Well, mind is part of the outer world, too. But mind, when pointed toward the divine, divine ideas is part of the inner world as well. Mind, heart, and gut. That's the inner world. And for so many years, I went right past the heart and gut part of it. It's that meld of humanity and divinity that we talk about. And we become more than we are in the outer world alone. More truly ourselves. And now we can say with confidence that we are expressions of the divine. The inner world is be first, then do and finally have. And the have is the heart's desire, being first in that present moment place, in that place of connection with the divine. Now, when this happens, we're gonna do something different with regard to community. We talked about having many communities, community like maybe our family, maybe a small group of friends, Maybe a spiritual community such as Unity of Payson, and maybe the town that we live in, Payson, for us here in person, or the state, or the nation, or the globe. We have many communities. So when we approach that community, if we have not taken time to do some inner work first, then when we reach out, the success level with which we reach out, the effectiveness with which we reach out is very limited. So how do we do this? How do we begin our journey with the inner world and not the outer world? A couple of things, simple but I haven't done them for a long time. Oh, I mean, I do them now, but for a long time in my life, I didn't do them. Number one, pause. If I was back there in those rocks down by the sea in Mexico and had taken the time to pause, even to do nothing more than just be quiet for a moment, I might've chosen a different course. I suspect it would have come out differently. So pause, so important. When something seems to be urging you or pulling you, pause. Then contemplate. I think contemplation is a cousin of meditation. Um, for us, it's almost like prayer. That contemplation, that contemplative look at our circumstance, look at our position in the realm of all that is, look at our being spiritual beings and not just human beings. Emerson says this couples up prayer with contemplation, says prayer is the contemplation of the facts of life, or I would say the situation, from the highest point of view. You're not gonna get that in your outer world that highest point of view. Go first to the inner world and then express. You got that pause, contemplate, express. Remember Moses and his transformation? He stopped looking outward at all the things that he might fear. And he began connecting with that I am presence that he believed would always be with him. 
and in him. He turned from looking outward to looking inward. Again, that key spiritual truth. When we address life from the inner worst world first, our outer world is transformed. I would say in parentheses, we rightly connect with our communities as within, so without, and so it is. Thank you, Reverend Neal. And now as we prepare for meditation, our meditation song is I Allow by Terry Wilder. Just allow yourselves that, these few moments to go within. Now is a time when we can turn inward for a few minutes in the silence. And that's where we start. That's what's going to allow us to transform. So take a few breaths with me and simply notice your breath breathing in deeply and then exhaling. So as you bring yourself to this quiet place, Ask this question first. What do I need? Today, what do I need? I am all I need. That very I am presence, this divinity that resides in me is the source of all that I may need. Do I need strength? I am strength. 
Do I need love? I am love. Do I need wisdom? I am wisdom. So in this time of quiet, acknowledge that you have access to all that you need. It may take a little bit of letting go, a little bit of allowing, but the rewards are so overwhelmingly generous. So while we're here in the quiet, imagine yourself having all your heart's desire, everything that you need and truly desire. What would it look like? See yourself in that situation, that place where you have all that you need and desire. And be grateful. This is our gift. This is the gift of the divine to us, that connection with the divine, that divine spirit within us that allows us to go inward, to know, to be guided, to be inspired. That gift is ours. And we are grateful. Bring your attention now back to the present moment. Remembering that going within, going into that inner world is never impossible, always possible for us. And so as we come back to this time and the place where we are, We breathe a sigh of relief from some of the things that we may have been fearing. We take a deep breath ready to, with new knowledge, with new understanding, with new life, to begin that next step for us. So bring your awareness back here. Perhaps open your eyes if you've had them closed. Wiggle your fingers, your toes to be here, having brought back with you that ability to be ever in the place of the divine within. And so it is. As we look out, I see a few eyes that aren't quite back. Well, let's take another deep breath so that everybody is here present. Ah, thank you all. Ah, well, now's the time for our gifts and our offerings. Unity of Payson is grateful for all of the support as we support the larger community. And the uh, slides for giving for those of you online or even here in person are up. You can always go to unityofpayson.org and go to the donate button. Here in person, we will be passing the basket. And so let's hold what you just discovered in the meditation in your heart as you charge up the energy of this gift Money is nothing but an expression of spirit. And so whatever you discovered in spirit in that meditation, charge that up right here in your hands. 
and let's say our affirmation together. Freely we give and freely we receive. And our song for the offertory is Room at the Table by Carrie Newcomer. Let our hearts not be hearty To those living on the margins There is room at the table For everyone This is where it all begins This is how we gather in There is room at the table For everyone For too long we have wandered Burdened and undone But there is room at the table for everyone, let us sing the new world in. This is how it all begins. There is a room at the table for everyone. There is room for us all. And no gift is too small. There is room at the table for everyone. There is enough if we share. a great song we all have to remember that this is a bountiful world and there's no reason for anybody to be starving everybody can come to the table and so dedication of offering let's bless the gifts and the givers as we say together divine love flowing through us blesses and multiplies all that we are all that we have all that we give and all that we receive we are abundantly prosperous and we give thanks thanks rom 
and announcements. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, so we have some announcements, and uh, next month or next week, we continue on with this month's theme of community. And um, Reverend Julianne Lewis is going to be speaking. Do you know if she'll be here in person or? Okay, so that will be online, and her talk title is Interfaith Harmony. And um, once again, uh, we have lots of activities going on. I'm only going to highlight a couple of them here, but do check the Monday e-newsletter for everything that's going on. Thank you, Terry, for always putting that out. And first of all, we have the Course in Miracles. That is such a great ongoing class. Um, Tuesday, May 21st from 6 to 7.30. And of course, that's by Reverend Neal, and that is on Zoom. And then we have the Writers Group, Thursday the 23rd from 4 to 5, and that also is on Zoom. Both of those are longstanding groups. And a newer one, we have the Saturday Soul Boost with Reverend Neal every Saturday from 4 to 4.30 on Zoom. And this is just a brief um, going over of what his uh, talk is going to be about on Sunday. And this is really sort of where the talk evolves. Um, interesting discussions. And P.S. from Reverend Neil. I just want to emphasize that you don't want to miss next Sunday. Uh, Reverend Julianne Lewis, of course, is from Interfaith Community is the name of the Unity Church that she heads up and uh, she's going to talk about uh, interfaith harmony. Unity, as you know, honors all spiritual paths. And so that interfaith element is something we may not talk about as much, but it's very, in, uh, very much integrally a part of who we are at Unity. So I uh, just want to say to those of you who are online, hang in there for just a minute. I'd love to greet you all. And uh, now those of us here are going to circle up and we will sing the peace song and then the prayer for protection as we end our service. Thank you all for being here. prayer of protection together. The light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God protects us. I am power. And the presence of God watches over us. I am presence. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Bless your day, everyone. If we'll, uh, while we're getting a, li a little social time here, let me uh, look at the, uh, those of you who've joined us online. And uh, 
Let's see. Skip and I want to start with Skip and Michael. It's so good to see you and to uh, and hopefully we'll get to see you again uh, very, very soon up here in Payson. We've missed you and uh, I'm so glad you're with us today. Uh, Kay Butler from Alabama plus cat. Uh, well, she's got a couple of cats. Oh, I don't know. How many K? How many cat? Well, you don't have to tell me. I want to, I want to ask. Just, she's got cats. <laughs> so do we. Uh, Marianne, Marianne, the always faithful Marianne down in Mesa. Um, Sammy's with us. Alicia is with us. Uh, Donna uh, and Teresa. Uh, so good to see you all. Alicia, yeah. I hope to see you.